folks, it's Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the farm vlog today. Going to be a little bit different today. I've owned my Mercedes Sprinter van for somewhere in the neighborhood of six months, and I wanted to do a walk around and review and tell you about this vehicle, the things I like, the things I don't like, and would I buy it again. So stay tuned. We're going to go ahead and wash it up, go to a nice quiet place, and we can talk about the van. Is it worth it? Is it a pain in the butt? Does that little emblem right there mean trouble? First thing you need to know when you go to wash the Sprinter van is this. You're not going to get out of here for less than that and you can't run it through a regular car wash. Let's get busy. The wind's blowing really hard that way. <laughs> Let's go back here. So let's talk about the inside of the van. Very, very roomy, a ton of room in the back. Front seats are very comfortable, made of a nice material. I uh, really like that. I do like the armrest. The armrests are adjustable, so you can flip them all the way back, or you can flip them down and raise them up to where you feel comfortable laying your arm. Very handy, very nice. I'm six foot five, 260 pounds almost. I have a ton of headroom, which is super duper awesome. The seat even raises up further for shorter people so you can see over the dash, but that's no problem whatsoever. Inside, you can hear it's not so loud. It's It absorbs noise. This is the 12 passenger van version. I have two of the seats removed because we just didn't need that many seats. The back seats for a long trip not comfortable okay you want to put somebody in the back seat of this van for 10 hours straight on a long road trip they sit up like straight up like uh, uh, like military seats okay I'm coming to you not as a guy that wants to live in his van but a guy that wants a reliable piece of equipment to take him to and from where he wants to go to haul things and I'll show you in the back we've got some grass seed and stuff back there I have a farm vlog I have a vlog on a farm this is one of my farm vehicles. This is a vehicle used for hauling stuff for the farm, for hauling me, and for hauling all the YouTube equipment around. Let's turn the camera around here. So, I had an issue. I turned the key on, all these little lights illuminate. We get a good beep. The Mercedes radio comes on. Now, I can't do anything. I can turn it up and down, I can turn it on and off, but it always gives me this ridiculous warning, and I can't do anything here, okay? plays music just fine, the radio's just fine, I have a little SD card slot and I'm told this little SD card slot is for the navigation but I just put a bunch of music on there and that plays okay. Let me tell you about something I don't like. What burned me? I pulled up to my driveway and I rolled the windows down to let some of the man stink out of my van because I get in and out of this thing dirty and sweaty and sometimes I haul stuff that doesn't smell so good like trash and if you don't completely remove this key the radio will stay on indefinitely. So one night I went out, I stuck the key in the ignition, I went to roll my windows up, I rolled both windows up, I turned the key off, the van stayed on all night and killed my battery through a code on my computer and caused my computer to have the service engine light on. Not cool, not cool. I don't like that design whatsoever, it, it, I just do not like it. Door handles are in a handy spot, everything's handy over here. Nothing for storage whatsoever in the middle, and I have a, a tablet mount right here, and I just hung a trash bag there for my uh, trash, but when I put my tablet in here, I'll put it right here and use the maps on my tablet. Also, we're going to build a console to go in between the two seats right here. There's a cup holder issue here that has two cup holders here in the front in the corners. Back over here, there's a cup holder right here in the hot sun, and there's a cup holder right here. Watch. This is garbage. It's garbage. If you want to put coffee up here on the dash, that's fine. It'll stay warm. But if you want to put a soda up on the dash so that the sun can bake down on it, that's not cool. That's not fun. That's not good. I, I don't like it. How many times have I lost a drink from this ridiculous cup holder right here? Up here, above my driver's seat and the passenger seat, there's plenty of storage. There's a little compartment right here in the center that can't hold a pack of matches. It, it's just useless. It, it might as well not even be there. You could put a pin up there, maybe, and the pin would just fall out every time you hit the gas. Let's get out. Let's talk about it, the outside. Now, the outside of the van is rather attractive. I do like the look of the van. Looks don't mean anything if it doesn't function. Now, let's go around the outside of the truck here, and it is a truck. I'll tell you a little bit about what I like and what I don't like. When I bought the van, 
and we took it on a 5,000 mile road trip. This top window seal right here rattled and made an awful noise at any speed above 70 miles an hour. Now, if you folks aren't used to driving that fast, that's fine, but when you're out west and you're out in the middle of the desert, the speed limits are 75 to 80 miles an hour, and I couldn't drive that fast because the van would go and it was so horrible. Our fix was to run a piece of packing tape across the top of my $40,000 van or 50,000 new. I'm not exactly sure what they cost new now. Not something you'd think you'd have to do in a Mercedes van with all that Mercedes engineering. Mercedes. Let's talk about getting in and out of this thing. In the back, there's no problem. I got a handle right here. You can reach in, jump right in, and you're good to go, okay? In the front, it is a problem. So I've had some friends that have a little bit of difficulty getting up into a vehicle. There is no handle. There's no handle. The only handle is way up here. I'm six foot five. A five foot five person can't reach this handle to get up in the van. So in other words, when my grandma got into the van, I had to get behind her and boost her up into the van. Why, why isn't there a handle right here? Mercedes. So we spoke a minute ago about the battery dying. I got up that morning to go to work and my battery was dead. Well, what was I gonna do? Jump it off, most likely. Charge the battery real quick. I've got a battery charger that'll jump it off. Well, where's the battery? It's underneath the floorboard of the driver's seat in a van, in a utility vehicle. It's underneath the floorboard in the driver's seat. It makes no sense. Now, let's talk a little bit about hauling and storage. This thing will haul 5,000 pounds. It'll tow 5,000 pounds also. One of the things that gets on my nerves about this van is that it locks the back doors no matter what. So a lot of times you'll get out of the van, you'll be at home, you'll get out of the van, you'll turn the van off, you'll go in the house, you'll come back out, you'll grab this door handle, and you'll be like, Ugh! and you'll be stuck. And you have to go all the way in, open the driver's door, and the unlock button is not on the door, it's in the middle. And there are two unlock buttons. One unlock button just unlocks the back, and one unlock button unlocks all of them. It is moderately annoying. Let's look in the back. Plenty of storage. It has this little locking mechanism. I'll show you that. This little bar right here kind of locks it in place. And if you don't want to lock it in place, you can pull that bar out and snap it back to the door and the door can swing all the way open to this little magnetic holder over here. Hold on, I'll show you. So you push it closed, flip that guy back, and it'll open all the way up and stick magnetically to the outside, even with the slider door open right here. And we've got some grass seed and tools and stuff like that in the back of here. I use this thing. This is a utility vehicle. All right. Is the van functional? Yes. Is it something that I would buy again? Yes, but I did buy the wrong van. If I had to buy this again, being a sportsman, being a farmer, being someone who likes to go mountain biking, likes to go running, do outdoor stuff, I would have bought the longer version, the 170 inch wheelbase version, the high top version, and I would not have gotten the air conditioner unit on the top. I would have got the version, I think it's called the crew, that has the two seats in the front and the one seat behind, because the rest of it is truck. It's all truck and I would have bought the four-wheel drive. Let's talk about the four-wheel drive situation. This video is gonna seem like a gripe fest about this van but there are a few things that need improvement and I don't care how big a fan you are of Mercedes or European vans there are a few things that need improvement. The vehicle is so long and so wide that when you get into a situation where you go like into a dip in a turn and when we're out in Utah and Colorado is when we experience this a lot you would tip into that turn, you take it at an angle, and one wheel would spin. So we got stuck in a spot that no vehicle should get stuck. I can't back it and turn it around in an off-camber dirt road area at all. I could not drive it in the snow. It's not good in the snow. I need a four-wheel drive if I'm going to have a vehicle that I can use as a daily driver, and this is my daily driver. As for service and serviceability, the oil change recommendation is every 20,000 miles, which definitely decreases the service cost, the amount of times that you have to service it. If you take it into Mercedes to have this van serviced, get ready to pull your wallet out and spend $500 to get the first oil change done. Or you can watch this video right here where I went into the Mercedes dealership. I got all the paperwork. He walked me through step by step everything I need to do for the first service of this van and for your subsequent oil changes. So every tiny minute detail 
is in this video right here. If you own one of these Sprinter vans, if you're thinking about buying one, right there's your details. So let's talk about the height of the vehicle and how much that affects the maneuverability of this vehicle. So I pulled in a park and I'm down here in a park. It's a beautiful setting here. I'm down here in this park and as I pull in, I rake the top of my van on trees, okay? It's not a normal thing for a normal vehicle to be up that high. Now, that being said, you're sitting up high. You have a huge cockpit here. You have a gigantic windshield that just gives you an awesome, awesome view of everything around you. So the visibility in this thing is super duper killer. I had an awesome drive when I drove across the country. We drove from North Carolina all the way to Utah, Wyoming, Colorado. My butt didn't hurt, my back didn't hurt. I could see really good. Now if we we're traveling west and the sun was going down, my face was being baked because this thing is a giant magnifying glass in the sun, just so you know that too. Something you need to be prepared for is rock chips. You're going to hit a rock in this windshield. It's like it reaches out and grabs rocks and bah, cracks your windshield. That's something to be expected for a van this big, for a windshield this big. Now if you have to come out of pocket for these windshields, we got one from Safe Light Auto Glass and I think it was 220 bucks. A lot cheaper than I thought it would have been. So let's list some pertinent positives and some pertinent negatives. The pertinent positives are very, very comfortable, very high visibility, very good fuel economy. I got upwards of 26 miles to the gallon. Very spacious, lots of room, just tons of room. If you spill a drink in the floor, you can just wipe it out. The windshield is a magnet for rocks. It's huge, it's big. Rocks are gonna hit it, that's it. The back seat is stiff and not so comfortable. Now, it depends on how far of a trip you're going. If you're hauling the kids around the neighborhood, if you're hauling the kids around town, if you're hauling people around town, it's fine. If you're gonna have to sit upright in that thing, then, then you might not wanna drive at 16 hours or you don't want to ride in it for 16 hours in the back seat. No way. It's to the point that the back seats were so uncomfortable when my wife and I drove across the country I told her to climb back there and go to sleep and she didn't want to get in the back seat and go to sleep because it was just too stiff. The final negative thing that I experienced with this van is that it gets stuck on a wet banana peel. It just doesn't flex enough. The suspension doesn't flex enough and when there's an area where it can spin, the tires can spin, it will spin on the wheel that makes the least sense. So if I've got a lot of weight on this wheel and no weight on this wheel, this wheel will sit there and spin and this wheel won't do anything. It's very frustrating, especially if it's just on a gravel road. Now, imagine that in the snow. Not fun, not cool, very slippery, and I just had a poor experience in the snow and ice. Another negative thing is you cannot take this thing through a regular car wash. You have to take it through a big truck like a tractor trailer car wash. You can't just drive it through the car wash where that spray will spray up underneath your vehicle. So you want to take extra care when you wash your Sprinter van to clean all the way up underneath the bottom of it so that it doesn't have those rust issues. It seems to have a nice gooey sticky undercoating to protect it underneath so I don't know. I don't know about the rust issues. It's a 2016. It shouldn't be rusting. So all in all a grand overview of this van. Would I buy it again? Absolutely. I love the van. I love the ride. I love the fuel economy of the four-cylinder. I love the reliability of the four-cylinder. The next Sprinter van we get will be the long wheelbase. It'll be the high top van. We'll probably still get the four-cylinder version. It will not have the rear air conditioning because it's just not important and I'm told that they're prone to leaking and it will be a four-wheel drive hands down it needs to be a four-wheel drive. I hope this helped you out in your decision whether to buy one of these Sprinter vans or not. I wanted to tell you about a few things that were annoying to me. I did one review after driving it for 5,000 miles. We were out in the desert in Utah, and the things that got on my nerves there are still the things that get on my nerves now. Now, are they deal breakers? I don't think so. This is a great van. It's comfortable. It's a giant billboard for my business, which is super duper awesome, but I do have to think about a few different things. When it's windy out, you can tell that it's a high profile vehicle. The cup holders, they're absolutely horrible, but stick around on the vlog. We're gonna build a nice console for this thing and cup holders for the front and back. It's gonna be super cool, gonna be really neat to see. So folks, thanks a lot for joining me here. This is a little bit different than the normal farm vlog type videos that I do. Click the like button, give me some thumbs up, put some comments down there if you have anything to say. If there's some little fixes or little things that you know about these vans, please let me know, all right? So come on back and see me on the Stony Ridge Farm, guys. We'll see you next time, all right? We'll Ooh. come on down to the Stony Ridge Bring your wife and bring your kids We're living life pure and sweet That's the way it's supposed to be Stony Ridge
another annoyance. When I push the lock button and I'm more than 15 feet from this van, it won't unlock. Sometimes it won't unlock when I'm right up beside of it. I push the lock and unlock button and the key fob just has to be really close to the van in order for it to lock and unlock. It's quite annoying, especially when you're used to having a vehicle that you can lock and unlock or hit the panic button and find it in a parking lot from hundreds of yards away. Quite annoying.